everybody, it's Ziz here. That's right, I'm back. And some of you have wondered what happened. Did I die? I, I didn't die. I've just been waiting for a game to do something. And so finally, we got some stuff we can talk about. As you can tell by the title, we're talking about Ashes of Creation and whether or not it's a scam. Now, don't worry, I'm not just ranting and raving against the game. Uh, I already did that video. No, this time I'm actually honestly asking the question because I don't know. I haven't formed an opinion yet whether it is or isn't a scam. Before we jump into all this stuff, there's two points that I want to look at when I'm talking about it being a scam. First, for it to be a scam is it has to be misleading, right? Intentionally misleading, lying to people, covering stuff up, right? It has to be misleading to be a scam. Now, as we go through all this stuff, some of it could be misleading or it could just be incompetence. And I don't say that to be mean to the developers. They do stuff that I could never do, right? They're really great. But when we look at some of these things, we have to ask, is this just incompetence or is it intentionally misleading? And the second part we'll look at is all about the money, how it transfers in from being a scam to getting the money. Now, the first thing we have to talk about when it comes to misleading the player base is how Intrepid Studios did their Kickstarter, all of their promotion, saying that this was going to be an MMO and that it was going to make MMOs great again. And yet after two years, we got a BR game. Now, I know all of you will say that it's just for testing, but they knew what they were doing at some point in the process, right? Now, here's a clip from PAX that they talk about the testing and they would have known that they were making a BR, but they don't talk about it. And the crowd goes crazy because they're excited for the MMO, but you can tell Jeff in the background is kind of smirking because they know they're making a BR. Awesome, guys. I, I'm going to let the guys make an announcement now. So <laughs> since you guys have been so patient, the questions have been fantastic, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Go. All right. So I know, I know we're pressed for time, but we, we OK. We have been very uh, satisfied with our pace of development so far. Uh, we've been hitting ahead a of schedule uh, internally on a lot of things, and um, we're actually very happy to announce that uh, we are we're going to be dividing our Alpha One into two phases. Uh, the first phase is going to be um, uh, a uh, a way for us to get a lot of players into uh, different arena modes and uh, test out our castle sieges, test out our, um, our city sieges, test out uh, large player battles, raid versus raid, guild fights. Uh, and we're happy to announce that that first phase of Alpha 1 will be launched early in Q4, this fourth quarter uh, of 2018. Now, some of you may say I'm reading into that a little too much, but at that point in the process, they knew they were making a BR. They certainly passed it off like this was going to be some great MMO testing. Everybody in the room, everybody was buying it, and that's why it was such a surprise when later on, hey, we're doing a BR. Why couldn't they have been honest with us up front? Why couldn't they have told us? Now, if you're one of those people that say that the BR is only for testing, well, I got news for you because it's sticking around after the MMO launches. Steven has even said that they're gonna keep that game mode going, which means it's not just for testing, but it's its own standalone product, which means it's siphoning time and resources and money away from the MMO to go towards it. Next, we gotta talk about the constantly changing timetables. Now, I know in development, stuff is gonna change a lot. Stuff gets delayed and especially in an MMO, which is like the biggest type of game you can make. It's gonna change. But when it happens so often, you have to wonder if it's intentional or not, right? Are they being misleading? Are they telling us, hey, we're gonna launch this time, but then not launch. And alpha's gonna be this time and then not launch. And then, you know, the siege mode's gonna be this time and then it doesn't. When is the last time they actually hit a deadline? Have they ever? Hit a deadline? Honestly, I'm asking. Originally, they were supposed to launch the entire full game by the end of this year. That's right, in just two months, the entire game was supposed to be out. And they continued with that all the way up till the end of last year. They sent out a newsletter saying Alpha was gonna be in just a few months. And now the timetable has completely shifted, where currently we have the BR and 
they are going to fast track Alpha 1 because we were supposed to get the Siege mode and then Horde mode before Alpha 1. But now Steven says they're fast tracking that stuff to be sooner. But weren't they already working on it? <laughs> um, um, is it possible to get the Alpha 1 before Hode? Yes, it is possible. It's also actually very likely that Alpha 1 will be before Hode. Horde. All right, so I'm confused because I thought first the BR wasn't supposed to take any extra time, right? It, was, it wasn't any extra time. They were just working on the MMO. And then one date passes and another date passes. And then we keep being told that Siege Mode is right around the corner. And they show us video clips of it and highlights in their stream. And now Steven is saying they're fast tracking the MMO, which is probably because of all the horrible press they've got. But why is it being fast-tracked if all that other stuff wasn't taking away development time? It, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, if we go back even further, do you guys remember how in Kickstarter, some of those higher tier packages had lifetime subscription? And then shortly after that, there was a whole fiasco talking about how there was the new summer packages that also had lifetime subscription. Oh, and do you guys remember back when Steven said that he was gonna self-publish and they were gonna try to publish in all the regions? And yet now they're using my.com, which everybody who's ever had to interact with them was up in arms about it because they were so terrible. I didn't understand because I'm from NA, but even as recently as like last week, people are still having problems with my.com because they couldn't download and play the game because their servers were all this is a continuing problem that originally we were told they were going to self-publish. Oh, another one? How about nodes? Anybody remember the node series where they're talking about the systems of the actual MMO? Well, we've been waiting on nodes three so long that it's a joke. It's a meme. People don't even take it seriously anymore. But they should because Steven has told us on stream multiple times that it was going to be soon, that they were working on it, that we're going to have it. And then months later, oh, we're going to have it soon. We're going to tell you guys, stringing us along. And yet we've never gotten it, despite the fact that Alpha One should be here very soon. But they can't show us even an idea of what they're trying to do. I know it's just a video, but how many times do they have to tell us they're working on it and tell us we'll have it soon and not get it? Now, another part of misleading people is just flat out covering stuff up that you don't want to be known. Of course, you should probably know if you watch this channel that I was banned from the content creator program and, and that's okay. I was very critical and they didn't like that. So I'm not official. That's totally fine, but it doesn't just stop with me. There have been numerous people banned from their discord, not for telling people how their handicapped relatives were bleepity bleep bleep. I've seen those people stick around. No, people who have been consistently critical of the game, those are the ones who get banned. As recently as a lot of you probably know, Death's Proxy. He was banned because he was being critical. Now, you could time someone out, you could just let them go, or you could refer to them as a ziz and you could kick them out of the Discord. What was funny is that I was never banned from the Discord. I've been in the Discord a really long time until recently I found out I was banned. I left the Discord voluntarily because I got tired of all of their sales pings. I put a note, uh, message in Discord saying that I was tired of the sales pings and I would be back when there was something worth doing, right? When they came out with the game, when the BR was officially released, right? I would go back to the Discord, which was just recently. And when I tried, I was banned from the Discord. What rules did I break? Did they ever notify me? Nope, they just purged all my messages, just like they have with other people. I understand getting rid of toxic people that are harmful to the community, but that is different than disagreeing with the way that you're managing the game. Now, talking about all the sales pings in Discord leads me to the second criteria of whether or not I think this game is a scam. We've kind of talked about misleading so far and whether or not it's intentional or maybe if it was you know, incompetence, that's up to you to decide. But the second part of this has to be about whether or not they're getting something out of it, right? Somebody's not gonna do a scam unless they're trying to get something. In this case, it's gonna be money. So let's take a look and see how much of what they've done so far is leading to a monetary gain. I said like I was banned from the Discord because of all the sales pings, right? And it was constant. In comparison, 
Apex Legends, I think I've only gotten one ping from them in six months. Think about that. Apex, huge company, actually released, totally free to play, needs to make all their money that way. They're, they're not, you know, they're not funded by Steven's $30 million. They're not funded by Kickstarter. They're not going to be funded by monthly subscriptions like the MMO will be. They are wholly and completely Apex is funded by their cash shop. And yet in six months, I've only gotten one ping from them. Now, not only their Discord, but what about your updates they send you in the email? Next time you get one, just look at how long that update is. And usually about halfway down, it stops being update and it starts being sales pitch. That That's in huge contrast to other games I've seen that actually give you information. Now, if you've played the game, if you've downloaded, you know, Ashes of Creation Apocalypse and you've hopped in, you can look around at all the different menus and stuff. And one part of the game that you will notice is very fleshed out as well as on their website is the cash shop section. You would think a game in such early development when the BR was just for testing, how much time and effort would they need to put into that? But the cash shop monetization system seems like it has more work than every other part of the game combined, more than the combat, more than the UI, more than the matchmaking system, more than all the bugs. The cash shop system is the best functioning, most fleshed out part of the game. And why does it cost so much? Some of these items are a complete reskin of the one that's right next to it. Same model, same animations. The only different is the coloring. They just, you realize there's a, a slider, a hue slider. They just slide the hue. So instead of being blue, it's red and they charge $20 for that. I understand they are a business and they want to make some money. But remember this all started with someone who was rich and wasn't trying to make money, but they were trying to make MMOs great again. In fact, he didn't even need our money from the Kickstarter. Remember the Kickstarter from his own mouth was just to get people involved in the project. So if he didn't need our money to begin with, why is the cash shop so fleshed out? So if we're talking about whether or not Ashes of Creation is a scam or not, what they sold us on was we got enough money to make this project. We're making MMOs great again. Come be a part of it. And instead, they're banning people who they don't agree with. They're putting all their focus, it seems like, into money. They've diverted from making the MMO and focused on a BR. And it just seems like they don't know what they're doing. Everything keeps changing so often. Still where I find myself is that I don't want to believe it's a scam, right? I'm intentionally like trying to convince myself it's not a scam. At this point right now, all the evidence I see tells me that it's a scam. What I hope, what I think in my heart is that they're just really incompetent and kind of greedy. So is it a scam or not? 